What if I told you that a British brand once dared to create a diesel engine so advanced that it ended up being its greatest mistake? Foden wanted to revolutionize the industry with a two-stroke engine that promised to change everything. So what went wrong? Why did a brilliant idea end in disaster? Today we'll explore the rise and fall of the engine that tried to get ahead of its time. What you're about to discover will surprise you. Foden, the diesel dream that tried to change everything. In the world of British engineering, Foden was for decades a name synonymous with power, pride and innovation. Founded in 1856, the company left its mark in history with its iconic steam trucks and later with diesel vehicles that became standards of toughness and reliability. But in the 1940s, Foden decided to take a risk. They weren't content with simply following the rest of the manufacturers who were adopting conventional diesel engines. They wanted to lead, they wanted to go further. Out of this ambition was born a bold project to develop their own two-stroke diesel engine. It was lighter, faster, and on paper, had the potential to revolutionize the market. Yet what began as a triumph of engineering ended up as a technical tragedy, overheating, poor efficiency, and widespread rejection from drivers and markets. What looked like a technological jewel was revealed to be a mirage. This is the story of how an audacious innovation was undone by its very own genius. From dependence to ambition, the origins of the project. By the late 1930s, Foden relied heavily on engines supplied by Gardner, especially the well-regarded six-cylinder 6LW, but growing demand and supply issues with Gardner raised red flags. William Foden, grandson of founder Edwin Foden, saw in this crisis an opportunity. Why settle for merely replacing the engine when they could design a better one? They began experimenting with a single-cylinder test engine. Based on Gardner's specifications, a bore of 4.25 inches and a stroke of 6 inches. Although their first thoughts leaned toward a four-stroke engine, they soon took a bolder step. They opted for a two-stroke design. Aiming for a better power-to-weight ratio, this architecture allowed more performance from a smaller block. The engineering team chose a uniflow scavenging system, a technique borrowed from marine engines. Directing intake air and exhaust gases in opposite directions, it was elegant, promising, but full of complications. The prototype suffered from overheating, burned 25% more fuel than the Gardner, and piston expansion caused frequent mechanical failures. Despite these obstacles, Foden pressed ahead. They weren't just building an engine, they were defining a new identity for the brand. A war that stopped the future. In 1939, the outbreak of the Second World War forced the two-stroke engine project to be shelved. Like all British industries, Foden shifted its production capacity toward the war effort. Assembly lines that had once built trucks and buses were now producing military vehicles and tanks. During the war, Foden built more than 1,700 vehicles for military use and close to 800 tanks. Yet the dream of the revolutionary engine never truly died. By 1941, when the pressures of the conflict had eased slightly, Foden's engineers revisited the idea. They recognized that their original design had serious limitations and decided to give it another chance with more advanced technology. A decisive alliance, the project's revival. The key to this second stage was a collaboration with Armstrong Whitworth Securities, who held the rights to the Caden AC principle, an innovative scavenging technique that used pressure waves to improve airflow and combustion efficiency. This breakthrough solved several of the original problems. It increased engine efficiency and improved cooling. And so, in 1948, the redesigned two-stroke engine was born, the FD6. It was a compact four. One-liter engine, supercharged, capable of producing up to 126 horsepower. Foden quickly installed it in its FE and FG truck models, as well as in the PVR and PVS bus chassis. It was agile, responded quickly, and its acceleration was smooth perfect for urban routes. Drivers particularly valued its ability to move easily through congested city streets. It seemed that the engine forged in the middle of a war had been reborn stronger. But the old ghost soon returned. Beneath the surface, problems that never went away. Despite the initial excitement, the underlying problems had not been solved. In controlled environments and short routes, the FD6 performed well but under demanding conditions long distances. High temperatures, steep grades, the engine exposed its weaknesses. 
On paper, the FD-6 was impressive. It weighed only 530 kilograms, much less than the Gardner 6LX, which came in at nearly twice the weight. While the Gardner delivered around 150 horsepower from a 10.45-liter block, the FD-6 managed between 170 and up to 225 horsepower in its high-performance versions. Yet its real-world performance dropped drastically under extreme conditions. In climates like the Australian Outback, the engine suffered from constant overheating. Cylinder heads cracked, maintenance intervals shrank, and reliability became a constant concern for fleet operators. On top of that, the engine had a critical lack of torque at low revs. Below 1,500 revolutions per minute, the FD6 simply didn't deliver the strength required something essential for truck drivers hauling heavy loads. Attempts at Redemption, the Dynamic Series. In 1962, Bowden tried to salvage the project by launching the Dynamic Series, which included the FD4 and an improved version of the FD6, the FD6 Mark VI, with larger cylinders and a 17% increase in power. But even these upgrades weren't enough to erase the reliability issues. The Dynamic Series boosted performance, but it also amplified the existing mechanical weaknesses. The engine was excellent for quick acceleration, but fragile under sustained pressure. It shone on short hauls, yet failed miserably on long-distance missions. Over time, the balance between technical innovation and practical viability began to tip against the FD-6. A fragmented reputation, fate by region. Foden's two-stroke engine was not rejected uniformly across the globe. Its reception varied dramatically by region. In the United Kingdom, the FD-6 found moderate success especially in single-deck city buses like those built on PVR chassis. Its responsiveness and distinctive engine note made it popular among drivers who valued its agility in urban traffic. In New Zealand, the FD6 even gained cult status. Its simple maintenance and the peculiar musical rhythm of its exhaust earned it the nickname sewing machine on steroids. For many local drivers, it became a beloved symbol precisely because of its quirkiness. But Australia told a very different story. There, the engine faced massive distances, steep climbs, and blistering heat. Under those conditions, the FD6 couldn't keep up. Chronic overheating, cracked cylinder heads, and sky-high maintenance costs made it unviable. Meanwhile, Detroit Diesel's two-stroke engines, nicknamed the Screamers, were taking the world by storm. They were noisy and rough, but they delivered three key elements. Reliability, durability, and a solid technical support network. Compared to that, the FD6 looked like a short-lived experiment. The End of the Road By the 1970s, the story of the FD6 was entering its final chapter. Its decent performance in urban routes was no longer enough to justify its constant failures in harsher conditions. Little by little, these engines found second lives in boats, generators and industrial facilities where they could operate under more predictable settings but on the highways, its reputation was already ruined. Fleets wanted reliability, not complications. In 1977, after nearly three decades of ambitious but problematic production, Foden definitively ceased building the FD series. This decline also reflected the company's structural troubles. By the end of the decade, Foden was in serious financial difficulty. It failed to adapt as quickly as its competitors to new technologies and shifting market demands. Finally, in 1980, American company Packer acquired Foden, closing the chapter on an era. Under new management, Foden abandoned its in-house engines entirely and switched to proven units from makers like Cummins and Caterpillar. And so, the ambitious dream of the British two-stroke diesel engine vanished forever. Remembered only as a technical anecdote of boldness, failure, and a legacy as fascinating as it was fleeting. If this story of ambition, flaws, and engines with a soul intrigued you, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe and ring the bell. Every machine has its legend, and here we bring them back from oblivion. See you in the next journey on wheels, where the roar of the past still lives on.